okay so this is the first thing that we are going to do we are going to read images from a file directory uh, so these are nifty images so the mri images the format that they are stored in actually they are first stored in what is called dicom and then dicoms are converted to nifty nifty is a standard format i'll talk about nifty uh, as well a little bit later and what we are going to do is we have these images these are 10 images uh, let me just show you the images so this is how the images look like uh, yeah this is how the images look like so this is a t1 weighted image but this is uh, high of very low resolution it's like in three millimeter space basically uh, one voxel so volumetric things uh, have voxel because this is 3d so for a 2d image there's a pixel for a 3d object or a 3d image you call it a voxel which stands for volumetric pixel so that's a voxel Okay, so the voxel size of this image is 3 millimeter cross 3 millimeter cross 3 millimeter, and that is the resolution uh, of this particular image. So we have 10 such images. What we are going to do is we load these, read these in MATLAB, and then compute the average uh, MRI image. Cool. Okay, let's go to MATLAB. Okay, so yeah, we are going to compute the average uh, of T1 weighted images. So the first thing is, I have this path. I have this folder here. I want to tell MATLAB that the images are in this folder, right? So for that, what we'll do is, we'll copy the path and then create a variable let's say folder and have the path over here so when i create this when i run this thing okay let me just clear everything else so yeah so one more thing so when you type clc that means clear command and this is the command window so clc will clear anything that is there in the command window and there's another command called clear it'll create if there's an it'll clear if there's any variable in the workspace so the workspace becomes empty so usually you would have seen people writing clc clear and close all uh, at the start of matlab programs uh, this is quite a practice because we just want to make sure that everything is cleared out before uh, we start with any programming close all is for any figures uh, so if i have a figure so that's a figure so if i say close all all the figures will be closed basically yeah okay let's start so first i'll create a folder name and i have this folder name another thing to pay attention over here is this particular thing so because folder has all uh, alphabets or it also has alphabets and num numerical uh, values like one and because it is in quotes MATLAB considers this as a character data type so yeah so data types are important uh, this is a character data type now so this is just the path of the folder okay now i want to read all the images that are there in here so one thing that i can do is i can basically say file one and then uh, put the path of the first file which would be copying this and then having this copying the file name dot nii dot nii is the extension for nifty files but this is this is the the 
more hard way because I'll have to do this 10 times. So this is not something that you would uh, or not something a lazy person would want to do. So the better way is to use what, what is called as a directory function or DIR and you do it as follows. So let's say I have another variable and I call it files and what I do is I use the DIR function called di. So this is an inbuilt MATLAB function and I pass folder to it. So when I pass folder to it and execute this particular function you'll see that a new variable files is created and it's a structure okay so this is another data type in MATLAB it's called structure what structure is it's basically a combination or a container of different data types so over here the directory function gives you the name the folder the date when it was created how much bytes does it use if it is a directory or not directory means a folder um, directory is more of a Linux term but uh, the equivalent term for that in Windows is folder and date num is basically uh, an equivalent number for the date that is represented over here so it's easier to work with date num when you program because dates have these uh, September or you know alphanumeric uh, characters and this is just a number so it's easier to work with this we, we are not going to work with date num today but just for your information another, another thing that you may notice is these two things so there are these two dots so actually the folder just contains 10 images that you can see over here but but the files uh, the files variable contains a dot uh, contains these dots as well again this is a linux terminology so single dot mean, means the current directory means location to the current directory or it points to the current directory and two dots means you go to the previous directory so these things uh, you'll use these only when you know you have to navigate around folders a lot so we are not going to use these two for now as well so what I'll do is I will remove those how do I remove those uh, one of the ways is to use what is called as is member function so is member so what is member does is it sees uh, Okay, let me just type it out and then I'll uh, tell it to you. So it requires two, uh, okay, nowadays MATLAB is very nice. It also tells you or prompts you uh, what things it expects. So since is member is a MATLAB function or a uh, MATLAB inbuilt function, it'll tell you what it expects. So it expects two things, A and B. My A is going to be the files that I just created but it expects something that is not structure because structure is this container that has all, all the things so I'll just give him the name uh, so this is how you access elements of the structure so we want to access the name folder because we want to remove these two and the way I'm going to identify these two is using the name field so I'm going to use name but if you actually execute this structure is created in such a way in MATLAB that when you execute I mean when you just uh, write files dot name it will give you all the all the fields or all the elements in that one by one so actually the elements are overlapped so actually you should have got the entire array the entire you know 10 image array or image names array 
but what you actually get is just the last image name because what happens is the first image comes it's stored into a variable called answer and then the next image name over overwrites uh, on that answer and then you know there's only the last variable that is uh, left so to get all the names what you do is you convert it into what is called as a cell structure and it's easy you just use curly braces so when you do curly braces and you execute that you get all the uh, names together so here you can see all the names the first two are the dots that we want to remove and then these are the names notice this is what is called cell another data type in MATLAB so again cell is a data type where that can contain multiple things so it can also contain dots it can contain numbers it can contain uh, alphabets and so on so that's the speciality of cell so I, I converted this to a cell and then what I want to remove so remember I want to remove the dots that are there so I'll say okay if there's a dot or a double dot so is member what it will do is it will find these particular names or these particular strings in the first uh, argument so this is the first argument this is the second argument so is member will find if the elements in the second argument are a member in the first argument so when I execute this oh it'll give me an error yeah if I execute this you see it gives me a logical array uh, where the first two elements are 1 and others are 0 so this tells me that okay the first two elements are what uh, correspond to dot and double dot so what I want to do is I want to remove those so I'll just keep those that are not dot and double dot which is done using a tilde over here so anytime you want to use a not character or anything that is not in MATLAB you use a tilde and what this will do is it will give you the complement of what was there or the not of what was there so you get zeros here and ones here and that's what exactly you want you just want to keep these and remove these so that's it when you do that and you see your file structure the dots are gone so moving forward so now we have the names of all the files uh, that we wanted 